The gospel isn't there for us to have a happy marriage, but a God glorifying marriage is there to put the gospel on display. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marked by dust and sweat and blood. From Men in the Arena, it's Equipping Men in 10. Our conviction is to call you into the arena of manhood, call you out of the faceless, nameless bleachers, and call you up to be the best version of you. Because when a man gets it, everyone wins. Enjoy today's episode. Men in the Arena Army, we salute you. Hey guys, thanks for listening to another episode of the Men in the Arena podcast. This is Equipping Men in 10. I'm Jim Ramos. Guys, we've got a cool episode for you today. We're in our series uh, uh, interviewing our national team captains about blogs they wrote throughout the summer. It's a new and fresh way of just doing things for you guys. And I'm really excited about today's guest. Behind me right there is a football from a team I coached and for lack of a better word, we are state champions, and uh, this guy was on that team. He was our starting nose guard, and actually, he was critical factor in us winning the game, and uh, he was a guy who grew up in another religion and uh, came to faith in Christ, and uh, we reconnected after 20 years, and he's highly involved in our ministry. This guy's a great guy. You're going to love this guy's heart, and he's going to talk to you about his blog, Making Your Marriage Great Again, What Kind of Marriage Is Yours? So, guys... Before I introduce Garrett, I want to say, hey, thank you guys for making us Spotify's number one Christian podcast for men. That is a huge feat, and we're super humbled and blessed uh, that you guys are. uh, That's all because of you guys, so thank you so much. So, hey, I want to talk to you about today's guest, Garrett Schooley. Garrett lives in California's Central Coast with his beautiful wife of 17 years, Michelle. They have three children where he works also as a lands- uh, as a foreman for a landscape company in San Luis Obispo. Uh, they are also licensed foster parents. Garrett currently serves as an elder at his church in Morro Bay. And obviously, as I already mentioned, he is one of our national team captains. He will be launching a team with his co-captain this fall, a virtual team. We really want you guys to consider joining that team. But I want to introduce you to my friend Garrett Schooley. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, Jim. Thanks for having me on. It's always uh, great to hang out with you, man. When we had our little Mexican food uh, dinner a couple uh, months ago in San Luis, that was just a huge blessing yeah. to me. And it's just uh, it's just great to see your journey. And you just never know where those uh, – I actually coached you. Uh, I was your head frost soft coach for two years and then mm-hmm. yep. came back your senior year and was a defensive coordinator. So we've had some interactions. Yep, definitely. I have uh, – uh, yeah, there's many uh, Monday run days from all those penalties during the games. <laughs> oh, you know it, buddy. Well, you know, it's just been, it's just fun to watch you. And uh, I mean, you've really turned into quite a great man. And so you just never know what these young guys are going to turn into and, and, and your impact on those guys. Like I had a kid I coached about five years ago. I just found out got killed in a car crash. You just never mm-hmm. know what's going to happen. And so um, it's, it's, but it's good to see you and your life and how God's taking care of you. And I, Hey, I just want to jump into today's topic. If that's all right with you. Yeah, let's do it. Well, hey, you wrote a great blog on marriage. Why did you, of all the things, when I asked you to write this blog, I didn't give you any guidance at all. Why did you mm-hmm. choose the topic of marriage? Well, Jim, uh, it was really just a uh, coincidence. I took a small group with me and my wife and a group from our church. We went through uh, Francis Chan's marriage book, uh, Marriage in Light of Eternity, uh, You and Me Forever, A Marriage in Light of uh-huh. Eternity. And it really hit me hard, challenged me in my faith and in my walk and where how my fair marriage fits into the gospel. And so mm. I, I thought, hey, let's, uh, let's do this because it was fresh in my mind. And a lot of people from the group uh, came away with a lot of, like, they were encouraged by it. So I thought if I was encouraged by it, I think other men uh, could be encouraged by it. So I just wanted to share. Yeah. Chan was a great pastor and he stepped away from the local church and he's doing like a global thing. Now the guy's a phenomenal human being. I highly mm-hmm. recommend anything that he puts out there. So uh, you and me forever marriage in light of eternity was the book's title. You said, yeah. quote, the book hit me hard. So what is yeah. the greatest nugget of truth you take away? Like when I read a book, if I can take one or two things and go, man, I'm going to remember this forever. That is actually a great book. So what, yeah. what, are, what are some things you took away? You said, I am going to remember this about marriage forever. Right. Well, for me, it was, it was the gospel isn't there for us to have a happy marriage, but a God glorifying mm. marriage is there to put the gospel on display. 
So is it, if in a sense, it wasn't a marriage book and like, here's tips and tricks to have a happy marriage, but how does marriage fit into God's overall plan to uh, put his gospel on display? And so that was kind of, kind of just a game changer. And, and to realize my most important relationship is my relationship with God. And if mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, if I go to him and I receive my identity from him, then I can bring that to my marriage and not end up putting uh, and needing so much from a, from my wife where I put a weight on her that she wasn't meant to carry. So I think that 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 just that kind of changed my mind because like Chan Chan said in the book, there's nothing worse than a needy husband. And I've I've been there, and it's like, wow, God, you you changed my life, and you've given me everything that I need to run this race well. And so, how how am I? How, how do I change my attitude and my focus so I can be, you know, uh, encourage my wife? So, so Garrett, you say there's nothing worse than a needy husband, but then mm-hmm. earlier you said that marriage is about putting God on display. So I could not agree with you more that marriage mm-hmm. is about putting God on display because that's the closest union that we have to Christ in the church. So I will push mm-hmm. back a little bit, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I don't agree with that statement that there's nothing more worse than a needy husband because I think there is one thing worse than a needy husband, and that's a broken marriage. And so if our goal is to put God on display in marriage, which is that's what you said, then a needy husband is is negative, and I agree 100%, but that broken marriage is even worse. Well, hey, Garrett, so in your blog you wrote this, and and I want to talk about this real quick. You said, and I think you've alluded to this already in our discussion, Quote, most marriage problems are not marriage problems. They are God's problems. We explain that? Yeah, mo- most marriage problems are, uh, come from a, they're not marriage problems in the sense that, like we said before, we're trying to get things from people that we should be getting from our, from God. Mm-hmm. And if we don't see, if we don't have that relationship squared away and, and see it for what it is, then we can, we can be relying on people to, for things and relying on our spouse to come through for us and, and people are going to fail us. So when, when they do, it's like, what are we, are we, it, it, it's placing the weight on something that should be placed on, on God and trusting him. And so, yeah, it, our, for, our primary priority here is our relationship with God. And that's not to the neglect of our marriage, but it, that's what will give our marriage hope. And, and, and that would, that's what will give our marriage the purpose that it was designed for if we, we get those priorities straight. Okay, I um, like that. Let's get some blood and guts on this, though. I want to really unpack what you just said. And so yeah. you, you, you talk about something a lot of guys are very awkward talking about, which is a relationship with God. Uh, that's yeah. how I phrase it as well. Uh, guys yeah. struggle a lot of times with relationships. And you said, you talked about a man getting it, getting his needs met from God. So yeah. so what does that look like in everyday life? So when a guy says, I just have God, you know, the Bible says in yeah. Psalm 23, yeah. <laughs> my cup overflows, you know, yeah. I will not want, you know, those are all great uh, theoretical comments, but let's, sure. and, I, and I agree with you 100%. But let's yeah. get our boots on the ground here, Garrett. What do you do to make God first, and what do you do to prepare and to follow Jesus in that relationship? You know, what can you pass on to these guys listening who are relationally awkward? What does it take yeah. in your life to make Him first uh, ahead of your wife? Um, it's first and foremost to realize what Jesus has called us to. Our priority is of making disciples, right? If we're followers of Jesus. That should be our priority, number one. And so with that in mind, God has given us tools that we can equip ourselves with. He's given us, number one, he's given us prayer. He's given us the word. And and most importantly, he's given us the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we need to train ourselves spiritually, just like we train physically and just like we train for jobs. There's spiritual disciplines that we need to integrate into our lives so that we can stay in step with what God is calling to us to. It's not to, to, to gain favor with him. It, it's to train us. He's trying to train us up to be who we were created to be in Christ. So prayer uh, and studying your, the word and studying scripture, getting into small groups like these men in the arena, virtual teams, getting involved and serving alongside your wife is critical because when you guys are 
are you guys together or focus outward, then, you know, you won't fight so much inward when you're in the war, you know, when you're in a, a, a foxhole, you know, it, you're, some of these problems just go away when you're outward focused. And yeah. So, that's, yeah. But, no, that's really good, man. I, I'm glad you articulated that because I think you're right. The first thing you said is making disciples. You know, we're called to make disciples. So what I heard you say is, you know, a lot of Christians out there today, Christian men play defense. They're like in this prevent mm-hmm. defense. You know, I'm just going to mm-hmm. hold my ground, and I think that is the mm-hmm. wrong way to look at our faith. We are to be mm-hmm. on the offensive at all times. Mm-hmm. Don't be offensive. Be on the yeah. offense. Yeah. You know, be on the offensive, uh, pushing back the darkness. So that that primary outlook is is kind of you're either one of you're either missionary or you're a mission Mm -hmm. field so i think that's really good then you talked about the spiritual disciplines you said Mm -hmm. you know be in prayer be in the bible Mm -hmm. listen to the voice of the holy spirit uh and Mm -hmm. serve other people i mean there are more than that but i think that is critical that so when you and that's why i asked you to unpack this because i know you do those things And I yeah. think guys need to realize, man, if my marriage isn't first, maybe it's because, or if my marriage is broken, or if my marriage is not putting God on display in a good way, maybe I need to fix my relationship with Jesus first. Maybe I'm not mm-hmm. praying enough. Maybe I'm not doing this enough. Mm-hmm. And so that's mm-hmm. really, really powerful, man. So I appreciate that. Hey, I got one more uh, question mm-hmm. for you. Then I want to ask you about your small group. So yeah. uh, you in your blog, you wrote, quote, we have a mission from God, having mm-hmm. a healthy marriage is part of that mission. Will you unpack that a little bit for us? Yeah. Yeah. We, we do have a mission from God and that is to spread the gospel. That's to be on mission and marriage is part of that. It's, and so we need, we need to have healthy marriages, right? But they need to have a proper place. They could become more, you know, more or less idols where our goal is to have a happy marriage, but our, our goal is to glorify God. And so one of the things that I took away from the book is also, you know, we are all going to stand before the Lord and give an account for our lives. And he's going to ask us what we did with what he gave us. And so with that in mind, we need to work backwards and say, hey, how am I doing this in my life right now? We want to, because the only thing we're going to really care about on that day is to hear well done and well done, faithful, uh, good and faithful servant. Right. Yeah. So then. How am I helping my wife prepare for that day? And how am I helping my children prepare for that day when they'll stand before the Lord? Because that's the day of retirement. That's when that's when it's all said and done. So we need to we need to reverse engineer this thing and see where we're at spiritually and then make decisions in our life and move forward. And you know, the most important thing is whatever you do, you need to start doing something. You need to do something. And because God can work with us when we're trying and moving and walking in faith. But if we're not too afraid and not trying, like, I, this is a daily grind. And I'm sometimes up and I'm sometimes down, but I'm always coming back to Jesus. I'm always coming back to prayer. And, you know, and that's, that's it's a constant. It's not going to be just, uh, you know, once I come to Jesus, it's all going to be smooth ground. No, it's a daily struggle. And sometimes I get it, back, you know, sometimes I get it wrong and I deal with it. We communicate and we move on. But I'm always coming back to Jesus. Yeah, I really appreciate that. When you tell the guys to reverse engineer that thing. In other words, play the movie. Look at the end mm-hmm. of your life. Look at the end of your that final breath and, and play it out, guys. And if, if mm-hmm. you're doing things now that will not lead you to that great finish, then you should start changing things. If your marriage is lacking where's that going to take you? So that's really good, Garrett, man. So you, you talk, you've been talking about your uh, virtual group that you're starting in the fall. Can you tell us yep. a little bit about that group and when that group will be meeting? Yeah, we're scheduled to meet on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. And I'm, I'm looking for, me and uh, uh, Jeff are looking for a group of guys to gather and, and look, you know, encourage each other to walk this thing out and whether you're married or unmarried or thinking about being married you know let's get together as men and and really focus on jesus and focus on what we're called to so you know on that day when we retire we'll hear those words well done good and faithful servant yeah i like Um, to say graduate (laughs) yeah right so so i want to be clear this 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 group that you're running in the fall is not a marriage group uh no it's it's a it's it's uh, a study guide out of my book, Strongman Dangerous Times. We produced a five book yes. series called 
the Strongman yeah. Study Guide, and this is book one, The Trailhead, that deals yeah. with lessons on integrity. Is that right? Yep. We're going to be going through the first uh, Trailhead book and learning about integrity because that's foundational to, to being a man and being a man of God. You know, mm-hmm. we have all this talk about alpha males and beta males, and it's like the question you want to ask yourself is that, not those questions. It's a, are you a Jesus man? So yeah, for sure, this will, this will, this is the, these books will help us get there. And guys, this Focus is for it. the first 30 guys that sign up. These groups are limited to 30. So how, how do yeah. guys sign up for this group, Garrett? Uh, just go to on the website, men in the arena and uh, just click on the tab virtual team and you, they can, they can join there and they can, they'll have a list of all the different meeting times, but we're we're at six thirty uh, Pacific on Tuesdays. So yeah, that's... go go to the website and sign up. We're, we're we want to get get this thing going. Yeah, you guys are, and you and Jeff together are going to be great leaders. They're going to love you guys. Yeah, so guys, yep. if you go to the homepage, click join our program. It'll take you to the link. You'll have a bunch of options. And if you want to be on Garrett and Jeff's team, you haven't met Jeff yet, but he's a great guy. Uh, he's a farmer up in uh, northern <laughs> Oregon, um, and and. Uh, of course, Garrett is a landscape foreman down in Central Coast, California. These guys are a great duo. Uh, you can select that group, and we'd love to get you guys pl- pl- plugged in. So, Garrett, thanks so much for coming on, man. It's always good yep. to see your face and hear your voice. And so, guys, uh, your boots on the ground this week is simple. Go to our homepage, org, click the Join Our Program button, sign up for their team. And, man, make sure when you're that there that you head on over to uh, our offer for a free book. Tell them what great fathers tell their sons and daughters. And we look forward to having you be a part of our program, guys. Until next time, feel the wet sand on the arena floor. Hear the deafening roar of the crowd. Taste the sweetness of victory. Smell the stench of battle. Get in the game. Get dirty. Grind it out. And be a man. You've been listening to the Men in the Arena podcast. If you hunger to be your best version, then join thousands of men from around the world in our Men in the Arena forum on Facebook. This is the best place to have open discussions around the topic of biblical manhood. Make sure to explore our website at meninthearena.org, sign up for the weekly equipping blast, and take advantage of our many free resources designed to help you become your best version of a man. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Men in the Arena podcast. Remember, when a man gets it, Everyone wins.